This is the moment Japan's nuclear disaster began. A giant tsunami wave crashes into the Fukushima Daiichi power plant, seriously damaging the building's reactors. Thought I'd tell you a little story. Uh, this time last year, we were in uh, Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant, uh, one of the most radioactive places on Earth. I always have lots of people who ask, you know, as to whether we've gained any superpowers or whether we have any long-term uh, radiation sickness from visiting uh, Fukushima. And I just thought it might be interesting to go into it and have a bit of a overview on what really happened. So last year wasn't actually the first time we went to uh, Fukushima, uh, to the radioactive zone. A few years ago, uh, we went over there, uh, we drove up there literally when they just opened up the red zone, uh, the Japanese government, and uh, it was, to be honest, a really eerie sight. Uh, we were the only people at the time walking around, pretty much, that weren't wearing hazmat suits. It was scary because we saw the bags, black rubbish bags full of contaminated soil, 50, 70 meters away from the road that we were driving on. There was a feeling that you're not supposed to be here because no one is here and no one been here for many, many, many years and you could feel it. You could hear how silent it was. Tomioka itself is, is a pretty small little town that sits right next to two uh, nuclear power stations. Um, it's mostly been abandoned. There used to be a lot of people who live there. And we had an opportunity to walk again for the second time around just to see how things have improved. There's now one or two older people who actually live there, which is, is nice, but still a lot of abandoned buildings, which have pretty much remained the same since the disaster when everyone abandoned the place. And you could see that no one touched these things for years because they were covered in dust. But at the same time, it was fascinating, it was interesting, it was an absolutely unique experience. So we had the opportunity, being in media, to go and visit the power station itself. I was very scared. I was scared of the consequences, I was scared about the, the actual radiation levels that are in there. Uh, once we got inside we had to have uh, radiation scans where we sat in this strange machine and you push a button and it, it sends like a vibration through you and then at the end they measure how much radiation they can find within your cells or something to that effect, how much you naturally have. When we arrived to the meeting room after the office, they uh, started going through um, the experience that we were going to receive today. And we sat down and we had a, a meeting with several of the uh, nuclear workers who were telling us about the different areas and what they'd managed to do. Um, how they put an, an ice wall underneath to try and stop the flow of water coming down and then they pumping all of the water into the damaged reactors to try and cool them. And then at the same time taking the used water from those, treating it and then putting it into storage tanks. And the reason why they put it into storage tanks is because while they can get a lot of the other radioactive compounds out, they can't get tritium out. Then we drove to a section on a bus and we got out and we overlooked the four damaged reactors from, from above on sort of like a little hill mountain kind of area. And um, the dosimeter there said it was I think 110 microsieverts an hour. Um, before we went there we were given a little um, guidebook about the area just kind of giving what they estimated radiation levels to be. And the place where we were stood, they ex well, what they'd explained to us was a damn sight lower than what it actually had been. We were only there a very short time, and then we got in the bus, and then we were taken around to right outside one of the first reactors. Uh, an interesting thing about it is they have a sign on the wall that actually says how high uh, the tsunami was, which was 15 meters. Uh, showing sort of context as to how high the tsunami came in after the earthquake, which was that really kind of showed the scale of what they kind of had to deal with. Some of the spots where we left the bus and we were allowed to take photos of, just thinking and seeing on the, the gauge how high radiation is there right now was 
a bit terrifying, but also you know that you can stay here for about five minutes. But if you stay here for about five hours, you are going to be seriously, seriously sick. So the amount of time that they gave us for each spot, I guess, was very reasonable and also safe. But again, knowing how actually high reaction level was at that spot at that time, I probably, if I went back there, I would spend way less, <laughs> not five minutes. I would get out of the bus, take a photo, get back onto the bus and keep driving. Next step, they actually took us inside one of the uh, nuclear reactors, one that had been shut down and wasn't damaged, thankfully. Um, going inside this was a completely different experience. Uh, there were people working inside labs in there. Uh, there was radiation um, or radiation waste, I guess, in barrels to the side. We actually saw the reactor, which was like a large green object. Uh, it was quite interesting. And then they took us onto the roof of the reactor and we were shown the pools with the fuel rods inside, which was very, very interesting. And you can see those blue rods lit up at the bottom of the pool. And you know how much damage it can make. After this point, we were taken back um, to have our health checked again, where they basically put us back into the same machines um, and we had to fill out questionnaires and everything else. Um, we found that the test said that we'd absorbed about the equivalent of three chest x-rays worth of radiation, which is interesting. When we left, they, the Japanese uh, tour guides, so to speak, literally stood in a line and they all bowed and they waved to us and they're extremely polite, lovely people. Um, we did feel a bit weird afterwards when we came back to Tokyo. Um, that evening we just felt a little bit dizzy and strange. The same night I, I felt alright, the next day I definitely felt very weak. Not much dizzy, but just very weak. Not as well coordinated as I was before. And it was a weird experience, but I knew that it was the response of my body. It was natural. Um, and then afterwards I was fine, and till now I haven't felt anything weird. I didn't grow a tail, I checked. I don't think I grow in the dark. No, no superpowers, unfortunately. I, I don't turn green very often. Um, so we're pretty much fine health-wise a year later. We have had health checks along the way just to make sure, but I mean, it was definitely a very interesting experience. Um, and I mean, to be honest, something I would do again, I have an interest in that area and just sort of seeing how they're progressing and what they're uh, managing going forward. It's definitely very interesting.